Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at a new two-in-one from Asus. This is the Nova Go. It is running Windows, but inside it is very different than many of the two-in-ones that we have looked at. So uh, from the hardware perspective, it looks like any one of these hybrid laptops we have played with over the years, but the processor driving it is not from Intel or AMD. It is by Qualcomm, and it's actually the same chip you might find in a high-end smartphone. Uh, this has the Snapdragon 835 processor built in, but it's able to run Windows, and most of the applications you might want to run on Windows, with some uh, significant exceptions, which I'll get into in a few minutes. And why you might want one of these processors is for battery life. Uh, because it is a mobile phone processor, it requires less power to do what it does, and uh, we're finding you'll get about 12 hours of battery life uh, out of this laptop, which is significantly more than you might see on a similarly equipped Windows computer that might come in around the same price. But there are a lot of gotchas here, and it's something that I don't think is all that consumer friendly. And we're going to talk all about that in this video. But I do want to let you know first, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was posted. So let's get into it now and see what this thing is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This is a little more expensive than I was hoping these machines would end up at. So there is a 599 version with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. Uh, this is the 699 version that has 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. I really would have liked a version with 8 gigs, which you can get outside the U.S., but us here in the United States are going to be maxing out at 6 gigabytes, and there does not appear to be any upgrade path on this. So kind of disappointed with that. Uh, the industrial design overall here feels pretty basic. It feels like your standard middle-of-the-road Asus 2-in-1. So it's got a plastic deck down here and then a metal uh, case here on the back of the screen. And it weighs a lot too, especially given the fact that this is now a uh, presumably more efficient laptop. So it weighs about 3.1 pounds or 1.4 kilograms. So not all that light, definitely not all that thin. And I know a lot of folks don't like these big bezels on laptops anymore. I'm really hoping to see if we're going to have to use this ARM processor on Windows laptops to see really thin and light and new designs versus kind of a uh, retrofit here of some new technology in an old case. And I think this kind of speaks to perhaps uh, some of the reservations these manufacturers might have investing in this new technology, which as you'll see is not quite there yet uh, in the course of getting everything to uh, work efficiently for customers. It does though get about 12 hours of battery life in our testing. Uh, that lines up with what we've seen in other reviews as well. And it's nowhere near the 20 to 22 hours that they were advertising uh, in the marketing for this device. Still, 12 hours is pretty good for a mid-range laptop like this one. And of course, your mileage is going to vary based on uh, how bright the screen is and the sorts of things that you might be doing on the laptop while you're using it. Now, the display on this one is a 1080p IPS touch display. It looks very nice. It's got good color. The touch feels very responsive on it, too, as we're messing around with it. So I was uh, pleased with how it felt and acted and looked. Uh, so that was good. I'm not that crazy, though, about the trackpad. It feels a bit slippery to me. It's glass. It's got a nice quality feel to it. But I'm noticing the pointer feels like it's lagging a bit uh, as I'm moving my hand around here. I was messing around with Photoshop, which I'll show you in a few minutes, and it just didn't feel accurate to me. And again, it feels very slippery. Uh, there is a fingerprint sensor embedded in the trackpad as well. So if you want to get in with Windows Hello, you can do that very quickly. The keyboard is not backlit, so if you uh, need a backlit keyboard, you're not going to find one here. And I thought this little notch here was maybe a light sensor for that backlight, which doesn't exist, but in fact, it is just the caps lock indicator. So if you are looking for a caps lock indicator, uh, you'll get it. Uh, on the side here, there is no USB Type-C, just two regular USB 3.0 ports. I thought this would be a great candidate to use with one of those docks that supplies power with a single cable. Uh, not here, so you've got your old-fashioned USB 3 here. Uh, your round plug for the power adapter goes in there. On the other side, you have a LTE SIM card slot because this is one of these new always-connected Windows devices. And if you have applications that support this, 
uh, your computer, no matter where it is, if it can get a signal to the LTE network, it'll download your email and other stuff in the background, so everything is always up to date when you take it out of sleep. Uh, but if you are on a limited data plan, of course, you'll want to be careful with that feature, but you can have it always connected by popping in the LTE. It also supports Wi-Fi, so you don't need to have a cell service contract to use it. Uh, we've been using it on the AC network here in the studio, and all has been good with that. Uh, over here, you've got HDMI out, so you can get it out to a 1080p display. We'll be doing that in a few minutes. Here is your combo headphone microphone jack. You got a volume rocker over here and your power switch, and that is it. So, uh, you know, kind of a middle of the road machine here, and doesn't really have a lot of the modern accoutrements either on it. So, uh, if you were expecting something uh, really up to date with all the latest standards, you will not be finding that on this particular ASUS model. So, now let's see how this device performs. We'll be taking a look at some apps that are written specifically for this processor and a bunch of others that were written for Intel hardware. So let's have a look. Now one thing to note on here is that this is coming with Windows 10 S installed on it, which means that the only applications you can install initially are apps that are on the Windows Store uh, that you'll find at the bottom of your taskbar there. Uh, there is a way to turn off the Windows 10 S mode if you want. I did that on here. They don't charge you to do that. When you turn it off, it becomes a regular Windows 10 professional installation, uh, which means you can get on corporate domains with it, and you can also install applications from anywhere on here like you would on any other Windows computer. So if you're finding you're limited uh, by the store here, there is a way to get out of it. The problem, though, is that it's hard to know what is optimized for this processor, what's not optimized but compatible, and what doesn't work at all. And I'll show you a great example of this. So I'm in the store right now. Uh, let me switch over to my other view here. And for example, we've got the Forza Motorsport 7 demo here. It says I can get it. It doesn't restrict me from doing that. But if I scroll down on the screen all the way at the bottom, I've got to actually wait for this bottom portion to load up. Uh, you can see it says X64 required, which means that this is not going to work with this computer. In fact, it's got an X next to it. But when I click on get here, it's going to say it's working and it's going to sit there for probably the better part of 45 seconds or so. Uh, and then when it's done, it pops up a very cryptic error message that means nothing to a consumer. So you don't really know if it's going to work or not until the application gets installed. And sometimes it gets installed and just doesn't load up after it gets through all of that. So I would have liked to have seen Microsoft give us an optimized section of the store so you know what is uh, almost guaranteed to work on here because uh, what you'll be doing, I think, a lot is just trying to sit through some of this stuff. Uh, this game will never work on here just given that it's designed again for that 64-bit processor and a much more powerful GPU than this mobile chip has. But I think getting this as your reason for not installing the application just is not consumer friendly. Just saying something happened on our end, uh, waiting a bit might help, doesn't actually help the situation, especially because I know it's never going to run, but many consumers may not. But there are a number of applications that are optimized for the ARM processor. And here we're running uh, the Windows 10 version of Minecraft alongside my HD Home Run Tuner, which is tuning in some live television right now at the same time. Uh, full disclosure, the HD Home Run folks are an occasional sponsor here on the channel. Uh, but this is pretty cool that you can do this, again, on an ARM chip in Windows. That's neat. Uh, but know that you could probably do the same thing on a mid to low end Intel based device also that might cost a lot less than this one does. So it's cool to do this on an ARM chip with all this extra battery life, but that's really the big difference here is the battery life and you're giving up a ton of compatibility as a result. But if you've got some lower end 32 bit applications, they do tend to work on here. So I've got Microsoft Word here. This is the version that actually came installed on the laptop, and surprisingly, let me just get out of the screen here, uh, surprisingly, this did not come with an ARM version of Word. It's running the Intel version, and it seems to be running fairly smoothly here. Uh, so I can move our stuff around here, but you can see it's not as fast as it might be on an i5-based Intel device, for example, but it is functional. The other problem I found, though, is that 
Microsoft doesn't give you a way of knowing uh, what the application is running in, whether it's ARM optimized or Intel optimized. And I was watching one of their developer things and they were suggesting that you go into the task manager, right click, and then look at the name of the executable to determine whether or not you're running the ARM version or the Intel version. And here, because we've got the x86 in there, we know that this is currently running in emulation. So it's a little more sluggish. I would imagine an ARM version of Word would run better. I was surprised it didn't have the uh, ARM version installed initially, but it does run. Now, web browsers are another issue that you're going to run into. Uh, the only ARM optimized one that I was able to find was the Edge browser that comes baked in. Pretty nice performance here, about what we've seen on some other mid-range devices. It loads up pretty quickly, but if we load up Google Chrome, uh, you'll notice that Chrome is running, but it's going to run a lot slower. And I also found that it would crash a lot, especially when you were uh, banging out some JavaScript and whatnot. So you can see immediately here, uh, it's loading up the page. It's relatively snappy, but it's not as quick as you just saw with Edge. Uh, and that's because it is running the Intel version of Chrome in emulation uh, to get this to work here. So we were able to get some benchmarks run on this one, and we did run the browserbench.org speedometer test. And there we got a score of 20.6 running in the Microsoft Edge browser, which is ARM optimized. That puts this laptop with an optimized app around the same performance as some of these older Intel Atom-based devices that have been out now for the last two or three years. And you can find pretty much on liquidation on Amazon now for far less than what this costs. So I was hoping to see better browser performance than that. Uh, and I was also unable to get that test to run in Google Chrome. We were trying to see what impact the emulation might have on uh, browser rendering, but the test just kept crashing in Chrome on this, likely due to some uh, issues with the emulation. So don't expect great performance here, even when you're in ARM. And in fact, you could probably buy a low-end Intel device running with one of their newer Gemini Lake processors for far less and get far greater performance as a result. Now, one thing I found to be very hit or miss is gaming, especially when you're trying to run games written for Intel. So I found a lot of this casual stuff like Shovel Knight here uh, actually can play at a pretty decent frame rate, about 60 frames per second, sometimes dropping into the high 50s. Very similar, by the, by the way, to what we see on the low-end Intel hardware. Uh, but other games don't even run at all. I was able to install Steam and get my Steam library to appear, but actually getting the games to run is another story because Steam is mostly delivering uh, Intel and AMD based games and nothing really optimized for ARM. So again, a hit or miss kind of experience. But to my surprise, uh, the 3D Mark CloudGate benchmark test actually ran on this thing and I got a score that uh, wasn't great, but actually surprised me given that it was running in emulation. So we got a score of 2,265, and that puts it right in line with the uh, lower end Intel chips we've looked at recently, mostly with the Apollo Lake architecture. Uh, so the graphics performance actually did a little better than uh, those low end Intel chips did for the most part, but the CPU performance is understandably pretty low. Uh, 2.66 frames per second on the physics test there compared to about 4.28 frames per second on the Atom Cherry Trail device you can see on screen there. So uh, surprisingly, if the game does run, it'll probably run about what you might experience with a low-end Intel device, which I was not expecting. Uh, but many of the games don't run. A lot of times you'll be getting yourself into some uh, graphical glitches and whatnot that might interrupt gameplay. So it's going to be hit or miss here. No guarantees of things working at all and when they do, it may not work all that great. But I do think Microsoft did a nice job with this emulation layer. It really is seamless. It does load up uh, even older Intel applications like this uh, database application called FoxPro here. Uh, it's working just fine on this and really didn't require any kind of special configuration. I was able to install it just like I did 10 years ago and it just booted uh, itself right up. I also installed Photoshop because I was curious to see how a more intense uh, application like Photoshop CC here might function. So uh, you can see it takes a little bit longer to load than it might on Intel. And then when we get into the actual uh, thing here, it does seem to be uh, running a little sluggish as well. So we'll go and open up a recent photo that I have here. Let's just wait for the screen to initialize here. There it goes. Uh, and we'll go over to the uh, picture I was working on. Again, I think this will probably run better on one of those lower end 
uh, Gemini Lake Intel devices. You can just see it takes a while for it to come up here. I'm getting uh, messages about my lack of a GPU, and you can see it doesn't really zoom in all that quickly here, and you get some tearing when you're scrolling, but I was able to uh, do you know, a content-aware fill here. I can just take the discovery off that space shuttle there if I want, and knock that out, but uh, I think you're going to have, again, a better experience with a true Intel device or perhaps an ARM-optimized version of Photoshop. But nonetheless, uh, Photoshop runs along with a number of other 32-bit Windows applications, but you really won't know if your particular application is going to run until you install it and try it. And then you got to decide whether or not you want to spend $699 to experiment with this new processor versus just getting an Intel i5-based laptop that you know will work with every application you throw at it. So in many ways, this computer kind of feels like an engineering experiment, a very good experiment in the sense that they have very nicely integrated uh, the Intel code base with this ARM processor, and it actually works even with some of these older applications like Fox Pro here. I was quite impressed with that. Uh, our prior experience with ARM-based Windows devices was uh, this version of Windows called, I believe, RT, uh, which was running with an ARM chip, but it was Windows in name and appearance only. It wasn't able to run all Windows applications. It could only run ARM-based applications. This one can do the ARM stuff in addition to some of the Intel stuff, and when it does run Intel, it's able to do it uh, functionally quite well. But again, you've got to think about the value proposition or lack thereof here. Uh, 699 for this one is not cheap, and you can get into an i5-based machine that will deliver much better performance for the same price, the difference being the battery life. So if you need an extra six hours or so of battery, maybe this is something worth considering, but I don't think I would be very comfortable recommending this to consumers, uh, just given that the application performance varies widely based on what processor was targeted when they develop the application. And I think for a lot of folks who are just looking for a way to run Windows apps, this is not going to be the path to a satisfying experience, just given how poorly uh, some of these Intel-based applications will perform on this ARM-based processor. So we'll have to see where this goes. I think I would be more excited about this if it was in a really sleek and different looking package that was very lightweight. Uh, but instead here, we've got a laptop that just feels just like an Intel laptop, but doesn't perform as well. And I would like to see them taking this processor and making uh, thinner and lighter designs that run with the Windows operating system. And then I might be a little more excited about spending six or $700 for something like this. But in the meantime, I think we can all wait and see uh, where this Qualcomm Microsoft marriage goes, because at the moment, it just doesn't seem like it's going to deliver for many consumers and probably will be a very confusing experience for most. So until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.